Good morning. Thank you all for being here. My name is Rick Wayman. I'm the Director of Programs at the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation. And I'm also a member of the Board of Directors of the Alliance for Nuclear Accountability, which is a U.S.-based network of 35 grassroots and national organizations working on issues related to the production of U.S. nuclear weapons. Joining me today are Mary Leah Kelly, Executive Director of Tri-Valley Cares, which is a group located near the Lawrence Livermore Nuclear Weapons Lab. Jay Coughlin, Executive Director of Nuclear Watch New Mexico, located near Los Alamos and Sandia Labs. Ralph Hutchison, coordinator of the Oak Ridge Environmental Peace Alliance, located near the Y-12 nuclear facility in Tennessee. Each of these facilities has specific roles in the U.S. nuclear weapons complex, and they'll each explain some of the key real and proposed nuclear weapons developments at each of their sites. Uh, we also have Hans Christensen of Federation of American Scientists and Matthew McKenzie of Natural Resources Defense Council. Uh, recently, together with Ted Postel, they co-authored a piece in the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists detailing the serious destabilizing dangers associated with uh, a specific nuclear warhead modernization uh, that was completed, I believe, under President Obama. Uh, and they'll get more into that as well. Uh, we also have special guest Zia Mian, uh, who was not on the original agenda, but he's Just here in and, uh, and he's going to share some like expertise with us as well. <laughs> this is typical of Zia. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yesterday, as we all know, uh, U.S. Ambassador Nikki Haley made no secret of the Trump administration's disdain for the ban treaty negotiations happening uh, just as the Obama administration actively opposed the ban treaty proposal at every turn. Why is it so threatening to the United States? It's also threatening to the other nuclear armed countries. They're not here either, um, probably for different reasons. Uh, but our panel of experts today is well positioned to talk specifically about the U.S. Uh, quote unquote modernization efforts. So proposed elements of a nuclear ban treaty include prohibitions on stockpiling, possession, deployment, use, threat of use, acquisition, transfer, testing, development, financing, and production of nuclear weapons. U.S. nuclear modernization plans would violate all of these prohibitions. Additional proposed elements of a ban treaty include recognition of the rights of victims and survivors of the use and testing, uh, as well as environmental rehabilitation, among other positive obligations. Again, the proposed and in progress U.S. nuclear modernization programs would violate these obligations. But I don't think that the states who are negotiating this treaty are doing so because they hate the U.S. or because they want American children to be defenseless against North Korea's nuclear weapons. I believe they're doing this because they recognize that every single human being is threatened by the continued existence of nuclear weapons. So how will U.S. nuclear modernization under President Trump affect the ban treaty process? And how will the ban treaty affect U.S. nuclear modernization plans? Uh, I think you might be able to draw some of your own conclusions after hearing this panel today as well as uh, monitoring the negotiations that are happening all week. Uh, and we'll also revisit these questions after the presentations. So first, I want to turn it over to Mary Leah Kelly. Thank you.